Ludicrous Feed is proudly sponsored by My Car, Tire and Auto, Car Loop, Data to Empower Australia's EV Revolution, and Hancock, Driving Emotion. Hey everyone, I'm Tom and this is Joy. Hello. Welcome to a very special episode of Ludicrous Feed. Uh, today we will be reacting to a an official Tesla video of full self-driving in Australia. That's right, it's the very first, I believe, the very first right-hand drive video uh, of full self-driving in action in our part of the world. How exciting is that? Uh, yes, although in Melbourne, not Sydney. <laughs> okay, close enough. <laughs> but to be to be honest, I think Melbourne actually, like in terms of competitiveness between, you know, Sydney and Melbourne, I think they do actually have more difficult, more stressful road situations. Yeah. So I reckon like if you can get it working in Melbourne, you can probably get it working anywhere everywhere. in Australia anyway. Yeah. Uh, I mean, look, as a Sydney sider, I, I personally think Melbourne streets are more confusing. Obviously, they've got the trams, you've got a hook turn as well. So I think this is probably a good place to start to show the world that, yes, it can work in a in a stressful situation like Melbourne streets mm. uh, in their CBD. So uh, just to, as a disclaimer, uh, FSD is actually not available in Australia in this form. So this is definitely an engineering test from the official Tesla account. Uh, we saw this on x.com, obviously, the uh, uh, this is the official video from their account, first time uh, a few hours ago, so this is not our first time seeing it, but we will do a recap for you. Uh, the disclaimer in the video says FSD, uh, or supervised FSD engineering test drive in a prototype vehicle driven by a safety driver, you can see that person there. For demonstration purposes only, FSD supervises is a hands-on feature that requires driver control of the vehicle and attention on the road at all times, hence why there's a driver there. Future feature activation and use subject to development and regulatory approval. Okay, so we may be a bit off this yet, but this is still good to see from the official Tesla account. So let's roll the tape, everyone. This is, a, I believe, a Tesla Model 3 uh, right-hand drive. And away we go. Take it away, Melbourne. Um, there is music, but we'll just turn it down because of uh, copyright issues. So, good to see uh, this video is pretty much end-to-end. -end. Uh, there's no cuts. Uh, some bits are fast-forwarded, which is fine. And this is a hook turn right here. Uh, and as a full transparency, I have never actually done a hook turn in Melbourne. I'm just a little bit too scared, i got to say. So, there you go. FSD already one up on me. Yeah, I mean, well, hook turn isn't like you wait on the left and then when the light is red, then you go. So it kind of <laughs> goes against everything we've ever been taught. Go on red. <laughs> Stop on green. That was just a little uh, Burke Street, I think, through Chinatown there. Actually, yeah, look, the, I just saw a cyclist like come towards the car. There's like pedestrians crossing. Yeah. And I think they're crossing, not at a crossing, they're just like randomly crossing at random times and yep. it's obviously not hitting any of them, which is good. Yeah, there's like, you know, there's um, there's speed bumps, there's like, you know, uh, alfresco dining, there's pedestrians everywhere. Uh, and this looks like, I don't know what time of day it is, can't quite see. I mean, but it's busy, isn't it? Like, yeah. there's pedestrians everywhere. It's almost twilight, right? So not quite setting sun, but... Is it? No, I think no, it feels like PM the middle of the there. day. Yeah. I wouldn't mind seeing this video in its entirety without the speed ups, just to see it. Or you could, yeah, I mean, you could just slow the video down yourself, isn't it? But then I've doctored it, right? I guess this is doctored already because it's um, it's sped up yeah. at bits, which is fine. I mean, it's end to end nonetheless. Yeah, they haven't cut anything out. No. So, you know, it's not like they've edited bits that they don't want you to see. No, correct. But still, it's a, almost a two minute video. I mean, I wonder whether they'll make like the long version available for people to view. Yeah, because then you can see kind of like in real time how it's reacting. Because you kind of can't really see how it's reacting. You know what I mean? Like yeah. the, the sort of the the time yeah, correct. gap. I mean, that's funny how it ended up in uh, Crown Casino at the end there. Yeah, I wonder whether that's a promo. <laughs> <laughs> it could be. Um, I'll, we'll just keep the video running as we talk about this. I mean, uh, you know, this is this is good. I mean, we, I've seen a lot of these videos online from the US. You know, seeing the FSD on the left-hand drive and. I'm not skeptical, but I'm like kind of, it's hard to relate because it's not our part of the world, different side of the road, different road conditions, all that stuff. There's something about seeing like roads that you're familiar with and going, oh, hey, look, it's driving on the same roads that mm. I've driven on. You 100%. Know? Or like, oh, look, this is, because like when we went to, um, when, when we were in Hong Kong and we were at that um, event with all the other journalists from all different countries, and we were being shown like, oh, well, this is, you know, this is the self-driving for Xpeng. But all the journalists were like, yeah, but have you seen the traffic <laughs> in my country? Like, do you know this situation in my particular country? Mm. So it's the same thing here. There's something about seeing it on Australian roads, isn't Correct. it? Going, oh, hello. Like, yeah, that's... And that's the beauty of, I guess, a camera-based system uh, without, like, built-in maps, right? I assume this is just all camera-based. 
Um, so, you know, it, it should be able to adapt to anything really uh, within that sort of local parameter. Wasn't this, wasn't there an incident recently, I don't know whether I'm allowed to mention it, didn't, didn't like some, didn't it like the Roadrunner incident? They oh. like painted a sky or something yeah. and it <laughs> ran straight into it. I mean, to be honest, I mean, that, to be fair, that's a very artificial scenario, right? I mean, unless a truck, a white truck or a blue truck goes across the same color a field of view, yeah. it's not within the realms of impossibility. Exactly. So. But still, I mean, you know, for ninety nine percent of the time, hopefully ninety nine point five percent. Well, I was going to say time, no. It needs to be a lot higher. Nine percent, right? Keep going with the percentages. Yeah. I think nine nine point nine 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 nine. Because ninety nine percent of the time means one in a hundred times it's, it may that kill is, someone, right? That's, let's be honest. Here. That's way too high. We need to be what one in a million, uh, whatever the road or road a billion or fatality something. rate is. Yeah. Uh, sorry to, to be macabre, but it, you know we've got to think about these things with safety. Um, but no, look, as Joy said, being seeing something in your own hometown, or at least in your part of the world, is, is impressive. Uh, this is the first time I've been truly impressed with FST. Okay. No, one thing I do want to see is it There's hasn't gone yet, but it, it, it needs to go on those roads where like you kind of share it with, with the tram lanes. Oh yeah, like uh, what's it called? Chapel Street, I think, in Melbourne. Um, yeah. And in the evening when like yes. you can't see anything. <laughs> yeah, like I said, I think this is still PM, but not... I want to see it in twilight, like with the sun's in your eyes yeah. or in the camera. So, yeah, this is great. I, I do admit, I'm impressed by the, how it's not knocking over any of the pedestrians. Yeah, and that's cyclist. the cyclist, that's the cyclist yes. I mentioned. Yes, yeah. yes. They're going through the mall there, well, not mall, but going through that very tight lane in Melbourne is very impressive. Mm. And stopping to go, go around the cars that are turning right, right? Well, that's true. That's I pretty good. That. Yeah. yeah. And, and slowing down the speed bumps and, and there are like so many traffic lights and... Look, making sure it looks at the right one. There's a left turn, which is and look, an and that's, turn for that us. was a green light, but it didn't obviously just Go. turn into all the pedestrians. Yeah. I, just speaking as someone who, I like on multiple occasions, I've been horned for not turning left, right, because there were pedestrians crossing, and I'm like, what? Do you want me just to run these people over? <laughs> so that's just my personal pet peeve when I get horned for not turning left when there are pedestrians. So yeah. I'm glad this car knows that you're not actually supposed to run over pedestrians. I guess the question now is how far away are we from the luxury of sitting in our vehicle, <laughs> doom scrolling, <laughs> or doing emails or work or whatever it is in the back seat, or the front seat for that matter, and the car driving us uh, to our destination, right? So I guess that frees us up to do something else while the car does the heavy lifting, so to speak. Uh, will we see this in five years? Five years, no. I think, but the thing is, at this stage, the tech is like, it's at a level where it, for me, it would cause more stress to turn it on because mm. I would have to look after the car more so than if I was to, well, yeah, I don't know. Like somehow when you're driving, like, because you're 100% in control of the car, it's easier to know what you're doing, if that sort of makes sense. Yep. Whereas if you have to always be on edge to have to take over, I think that's actually way more stressful. Well, see, we're about to experience that because our, our oldest son is about to start his L's, right? So I kind of feel like if you're supervising this full self-driving in this infant stage of it, or then you're, you're kind of supervising an L driver, right? I don't know, uh, which stage of the L driver are they? Like, are they early on, are they, whatever. So I guess it de depends on the de development of it all, but I'd, there's a bit of stress, right, I'd watching like it. to think that my son is a better driver than this right. whole will be, driving. eventually, but, you know, yeah, I mean, as an early L driver, that's what you're doing. You're sitting there and just, I mean, sure, you can take over here, but you know, as an L driver, you can't quite take over immediately. So, yeah, I think a lot of people have, uh, use that analogy that it's like supervising a learner driver. Really? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. But yeah, I don't know. Obviously, as a mum, I just trust my son more. <laughs> <laughs> That's good. I hope so too. Yeah. We're about to experience all that. Um, yeah. Maybe ten years. What? What are we now? Twenty twenty-five. I mean, tech does move very quickly. Again, the issue is not the tech. The issue is the what was that? Subject to development mm. and regulatory approval. It's the regulatory approval. That's what's going to hold stuff up because. Um, Sorry, I keep harping back on exp mm. Expung, but um, they, they said it's not it's nothing to do with the tech, it's just to do with the government regulations. Yeah. Yeah. I think it's fair to use Xpeng as a, an example because I would say they're probably the closest to Tesla at this stage. Um, so, I, yeah, it's, it's probably to do with regulation, right? Will the governments allow this? Um, and the issue is responsibility. Who takes responsibility? That's a huge question. It's not, um, it's not trivial. You know, do, if something happens, uh, who is it the driver sitting there? Uh, that's caused the accident, and then worst case scenario, fatality, or is it Tesla's fault, or is it whatever, x fault? Whose fault is it when this eventually will happen? Because I tell you, it will happen. 
It's not um, it's not a hypothetical here. That's what I'm concerned about. Because there will be a court case and there will be a, a, a use case scenario. Well, I mean, what currently happens in America? It's still the driver's fault. Well, Surely it has to be the driver's yeah, fault. Yeah, so why would yeah. that be any different? And if it's the driver's fault, why bother? Should I just take control of the wheel? Well, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's way more stressful. Way stressful. It's, it's stressful because it's your responsibility. Yeah. You're you're putting it in, a, you know, if you if you want to use the learner driver's example. You, yeah. But as in, for me, it's more like you're putting it into the hands of something that you don't even mm. really know or understand. Yep. So, so yeah, it's, it's great to see. I'm, I'm not... Uh, I'm not sort of, uh, you know, undermining this. This is great. But um, as a human, I'm still concerned, as, as hopefully a responsible adult, this is my, um, this is the doubt, doubtedness, doubtedness, doubtfulness within me. Still. I think you just, but I mean, what you just need is to have, you know, people like this doing like, you know, hundreds of thousands of hours mm. of testing. Um, and they have data, of course, in the US. Tesla has all this in the United States. I'm yeah, sure. so it's just about collecting enough data in all of the driving yeah. situations. And I mean, it, it, did Tesla currently grab all the data from all the cars that are being driven around anyway? And can they use that? I think so, data? because you, there's the, all the privacy stuff you've got to tick, right, when you drive a Tesla. So I think that's all part of that. You know, you will be recorded, your data will be sent if you want all that. Well, I mean, this is exciting. Uh, look, I guess obviously Tesla's got the robo taxi fleet. They want to do go into the ride sharing area where they use this initially to ride share. Um, I mean, we kind of already have full self driving in our cities. We've got Uber, we've got Didi, so on. Uh, so it does exist. So you were saying before, like obviously the step up is that there's no human driver sitting there. You can just sit in the car uh, and be driven around, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. Well, lots of issues uh, that come up, but also exciting to see this as well. Uh, being documented in the real world, in our real world, in Australia. I'm just impressed that it's in Melbourne, honestly. Yeah. Like, it's nice to actually see them finally, you know, testing in yeah. Australia. Yeah, no, that's good. And, and right-hand drive, it's very relatable, absolutely. All right, well, uh, yeah, we'll leave a link to that uh, video in the description. But otherwise, if you've got any comments, I'm sure there'll be lots of comments, uh, leave them below. We'll try and read them all. Uh, but anything else to add, Joy? Mm. No, yeah, again, like, this is, like, daylight. That, like I said, I want to see it <laughs> at night time or when it's raining and when there's no road markings. Yes, twilight. Yeah, yeah. like, no road markings would be impressive. Yeah. And when ca and other cars are doing the wrong thing. Like, what does it do when other cars are, yeah. Because, I mean, that's part of learning to drive. It's not just learning the rules, but knowing the rules that other people break so that you can... You know, um, yeah. like defensive driving. Yeah, That's yeah. To know, about. like, okay, well, that car's going to run a red, so I yeah. won't go straight away on a green, or, you know, yeah. it's the it's, car going in the wrong way around a roundabout. Yes, I've seen that. It's easy to drive in a computer game in a sim because you know you've got infinite lives. You're not going to die. But I'm being serious here. Like, you have no other life here. Once something happens, you're in trouble. So, yeah, I mean, it, can we guarantee? You know, nothing, full safety, yeah, probably not, right? Nothing's 100% in life, but it will be, has to be as good as a human driver. And and the thing is that the tech will catch up very quickly to that, yes. I feel like, um, you know, because in most other areas, like the computer can beat the human after mm. it gets enough data, right? Except for obviously the, my bias, obviously, I don't think you can do it in the creative industry, but um, for any kind of like scientific kind of stuff, and like, you know, computing and mm. processing, obviously the computer's gonna do it faster and better and more accurately. So mm. I think given enough data, it will eventually be safer than humans, but it's just, yeah. yeah. And when will governments allow a company like Tesla, Xpeng, Huawei, whatever, to take full responsibility for uh, an, uh, an incident? That's what I'm curious about. Five, 10 years, 15, 20, don't know, don't know. And our lifetime, who knows? I'd I think it's there's no point even thinking about that yet because the a the tech isn't there and b the environment is not where like a um, the government would regulate it anyway so mm. it's a moot point mm. it's like just I shouldn't say silly but it's just you know oh, it's still worth considering it's, uh, it's philosophical debates um, I'm all for that I could sit there for uh, hours and talk about no. it no see I, I like no nah. it's, <laughs> it's a five hour podcast stay tuned uh -huh. <laughs> or a, or a live show. Mm. Anyway, I could probably watch Which this all day. I will not be part of. <laughs> I could probably watch that all day. This no, video. It's mesmerizing. No, no. Mesmerizing. Oh. Tesla released more of these Australian videos. <laughs> I want to see it in the country. I want to see it um, in Sydney. 
I want to see it in Sydney. Oh, the DFO roundabout see, in I Sydney. Would, yes. Yeah? Yes, that right? DFO roundabout. Australia's worst roundabout. <laughs> yes. Hundred percent. But that's the thing. I would rather see like more videos. I just I don't want to talk for five hours about one <laughs> video. Like, well, we could have the videos running in the background and then talk philosophically because that's far more interesting than the tech. No, the human interaction. no. Okay, I d no. I'm just interested in like the actual stuff. I do not want philosophical debates. That's where we differ. <laughs> I'm a people person. No, no. Well, then I'm not. <laughs> Joy's a tech person. No, it's just I. No, I want to just deal with the practical the here and now. Yeah, I, don't, I don't want to specu speculation. That's the thing. I don't want pointless speculation on stuff that may or may not occur in the future. <laughs> so there you go. It may or may not. That's the thing. All right. Well, oh. thanks everyone for watching. <laughs> so it brings up more questions, right? These these kind of videos, which is good. Um, thanks so much for watching. Leave a comment below. Thanks uh, to Tesla as well for releasing this video. Uh, stay tuned for the next one. Until the next Ludicrous Feed video, it's happy charging.